Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, Sergey Kovalev's uh, Russian homecoming of sorts uh, title defense over in Russia. That's been canceled due to basically a timeline that might be getting set up by HBO for uh, an eventual showdown with Andre Ward in, in the fall of 2016. That's great by me. Uh, that sounds great by me. But, um, well, how should I start this? Um, all right, well, here, uh, let me here, let me read this real quick. It's, it's a real quick one from Dan Raphael. Um, you know, the homecoming, that's been canceled. Um, all right, the two fights... Would simply have to uh, would simply have been too close together. See, because they they wanted Sergey to have a fight in November, but then one like you know, very beginning of 2016, and they just thought they'd be too close together. So they're gonna scratch the the one in November and just start their you know, schedule over again in, in the very beginning, uh, probably January. So Kovalev should be fighting in January now instead. Um, she's, this is Kathy Duva. The two fights would simply have been too close together, Duva said of the November bout and a fight that will probably take place in January. As we worked on Sergey's schedule for the next year, it became clear that the best course would be to schedule his first bout in 2016 as early in the year as possible. While Sergey is disappointed that the bout in Moscow must be postponed, he understands that the change in schedule is necessary at this time, and he will return to Russia to fight in front of his fans uh, as soon as possible. Um, okay, HBO, I you know these networks, uh, whether it's Showtime you know, or, or HBO, they've become promoters. Uh, they just have. You know, you would think it would all be up to the promoter, right? But it's not. It's up to, a lot of it's up to HBO and they got to work or whoever, or Showtime, depending on who you're working with. So for Sergey, it's HBO. And um, HBO is working, they're, they're trying to work out a deal with Rock Nation um, to get a three-fight deal signed with Andre Ward, and his first fight of that three-fight deal would be on the undercard of Cotto Canelo. Uh, you know, they better hurry up and figure this shit out, first of all, um, if they want to put him on that Cotto Canelo undercard. You know, not that much time. I mean, come on. So I'm not sure if, you know, that whole undercard thing is going to work out. Maybe they'll still come to an agreement and just do his own date later. Um, but HBO makes the plans for these big fighters or, and especially for these guys that can eventually have a pay-per-view fight or for pay-per-view fighters like Gennady Golovkin right now. Uh, HBO is... You know, with this whole middleweight thing, from Gennady to uh, Cotto and Canelo and, you know, even a guy like Andy Lee or something, um, Lemieux, I mean, they have, they, you know, Lemieux and HBO, Golden Boy, they all got together, made that fight. You know, then they have the Cotto-Canelo fight. Uh, they kind of know exactly what direction they're going. Right. If everything plays out, um, it doesn't seem like if Canelo beats Cotto that we will see um, Canelo versus Triple G immediately, unfortunately. Golden Boy has come out again and said they're really, <clears throat> they're really not looking for, which sounds of funny is like they're not looking for a fight um, that high in weight so soon. Well, you're fighting the fucking lineal middleweight champion. 
I mean, this ain't Canelo saying this. I think Canelo will fight anybody that they put in front of him. I'm talking about, you know, Golden Boy, basically. The, their fighter is fighting the lineal middleweight champion, man. What, just because he's a small middleweight? Like, well, Gennady's a small middleweight. So I don't want to hear that. You know, well, I don't want to move him up so high in weight. The dude's a fucking middleweight anyway, man. Canelo is a middleweight. You know, he's sure ain't a junior middleweight. He hasn't made that in however many years since before the Floyd fight. Um, he made 152, obviously, but he had to just kill himself to do it. And it's been 155 ever since. So he's not a junior middleweight. We all know he's probably, you know, from like, as of now, from lightweight up. Canelo's probably that guy that takes the most advantage of the day before weigh-in with draining down to make weight and then ballooning up for the night of the fight. You know, so the guy's a middleweight. Um, if he can, you know, weigh in at 155 and come in over 170... What do you think he would come into the ring weighing if he was allowed to weigh in at 160? Alright. He'd come in, you know, a solid 177, you know. He, I'd say he'd probably come in around 177, 178. Um, if you're going to give the guy, you know, five extra pounds uh, of, of muscle to keep on to fill with water and then to drain all that water out... Hell yeah, he's going to come up in the high 70s, uh, high 170s. He'd probably enter the ring bigger than Triple G. So I, I don't get that. I think that's garbage. But what I'm getting at it is these fighters, you know, they kind of have a plan laid out for them by HBO. You know, and HBO is really seeing... Um, that this unofficial middleweight tournament and middleweight unification fights are going to make them a lot of money. Uh, no matter who it is, really. Uh, if, if Gennady wins, then, you know, if he can unify with uh, the winner of Cotto Canelo, that's great. If not, they'll pull over like an Andy Lee, get him in there. Um, you know, he'll fight someone for the, the, uh, the vacant WBC... Uh, so there's, there's a lot of money there, if Gennady wins. I don't know what kind of money would be there, uh, in terms of a pay-per-view fight, ver you know, like Lemieux versus Lee or something like that. I'm not too sure that would be a pay-per-view fight. It would be a hell of a fight, a hell of a fight, but I'm not sure that would be pay-per-view. Um, but if Gennady wins, we know what direction they're going in. That unification, that whole storyline and all that, that's going to get a, a lot of money and revenue brought in for HBO. They're looking at the super middleweight division with Andre Ward. Um, a lot. Uh, Abraham is highly unlikely to fight Ward again unless they give him a tremendous amount of money. And I don't even know if he'll do that because Abraham, you know, King Arthur, is like a king over there, man. I mean, he is really, you know, like the man. Uh, so I don't think he's really going to want to lose, uh, you know, that that prestige and get, just get schooled. Um, and he's fighting Murray, I believe, next, which will be a good fight, but... I just don't think he's going into a fight where he knows he is not going to win, right? Not yet, anyway. So you can kind of scratch him out for Ward to unify with. Um, who, who else is holding a super middleweight belt? Oh, B uh, Badu Jack. Uh, that ain't happening. No, that ain't happening. You know, that's... That's a possibility, I guess, but I, I just don't see it happening. You know, with Jay-Z and Heyman, I don't see it happening. Plus, but dude, Jack, it would get so schooled. And, you know, they have a, a, a big, you know, super middleweight champion right there. And they're going to want to keep that 
you know, keep him in decent little fights where he should win. Degel. I mean, that's really the only guy that he can unify with. Um, and he can unify with Degel. I mean, Degel was, before this came out, uh, Degel said, you know, he said right after the, the Lucian Butte stuff was being talked about, um, and it was first, you know, said that they were going to fight, he said, and after I'm done with Butte, I want Andre Ward. So that fight's there, and, you know, but I, I'll be honest, I don't think Ward wants that fight, especially not now. Um, you know, if he, he, he could have fought him, what, 2013, um, you know, uh, DeGale was trying to fight Ward, and Ward, you know, didn't fight him and chose to go Edwin Rodriguez instead, uh, a much easier fight. So, you know, he fought Rodriguez instead. And they, DeGale tried to fight him again, and it didn't come through. After DeGale won the belt, uh, he went ham on Andre Ward. You know, Ward seems to be so um, agitated, I guess, when someone says his name. You know, well, uh, uh, that's not true. It only comes to Triple G. You know, if Abel Sanchez says his name, it's the biggest problem in the world. But DeGale can call him everything in the book and, and flat out say, Ward has been ducking me for years and will never fight me. And Ward don't say shit. Don't, he acts like it was never said, like he never heard that or something. Uh, you know, that's, you know, where I'm like, oh, Ward has fucking selective hearing, huh? you know. But... Uh, and I, I would think, you know, you would... See, the thing is, if he loses to Co... It's, remember Floyd talked about losing to Winky is a better loss than... Who was it? Maybe... I can't remember. But it, Floyd made... Uh, in the video I did, uh, uh, about Floyd's been avoiding uh, tough fights way before Berto. I'll um, show you the interview clips where he said, you know, that a Winky loss is a better loss. You know, for Ward... Losing to Kovalev is a lot better than losing to DeGale. It's just, it just is. Um, I don't know if he's thinking that way, you know, but for whatever reason, and I don't even know if he's really wanting this Kovalev fight. I know that Rock Nation is surely wanting this Kovalev fight because they gave Ward a ton of money. We don't know the exact numbers, but from what they gave uh, Kodo, we know they ain't playing around. You know, they gave him tens and tens and tens of... You know, they might have gave him 60 million. Who knows? Uh, they might have gave him more. We don't even know the length of his contract with Rock Nation first. So, you know, I, he got a nice chunk of money. Put it that way. I would think they would offer him a award more per fight than Miguel Cotto. So, but they need to recoup some of that money. I mean, maybe they figure, you know, we'll take... Um, a bit of a loss at the beginning until we can build a roster, but they don't want to lose all that. They need to make at least probably 70% of it back at minimum, and they're hoping they can make all of it back and a profit. So they have to get them somewhere, right? If they're not, if they, they can't, you know, DeGill, that's a big fight. Uh, it'd be a big money fight, especially if you did it over in England, but it's not a pay-per-view fight. Now, Kovalev, that's a big money fight. Um, Pay-per-view fight. HBO will pony up the money to put that fight on. So, you know, that that's the direction Rock Nation's wanting to go. And Rock Nation, Jay-Z, Jay-Z himself uh, and Kathy Duba have both confirmed that they are in talks with each other and HBO Uh to get Ward a three-fight deal that will lead to an eventual showdown with Kovalev in the fall. Um, it's it's iffy. Um, I would say Ward must be down with it if they're negotiating, right? Or, or are they just going to you know go negotiate, then come to him with this great offer and try and talk him into it then? I don't know. 
Uh, I don't think no one does, really. Because, you know, you can go back <clears throat> anything. I mean, it's all on film. <clears throat> Precise did a good video with all of it. Virgil Hunter uh, said, and Ward said the same thing, too. Um, but he said, basically, me and Virg will always sit down, choose the safest route for me, and things like that. But Virgil Hunter said <clears throat> that he, he, him and Ward don't see him go into light heavyweight. And they said this after the Paul Smith fight. And he also said, like, he, he I mean, he honestly said he's a 68-pounder forever. Um, and he said, but if we ever went up to light heavyweight, we're not fighting any of the top guys for at least a year. Okay, so the Paul Smith fight was at light heavyweight. So is uh, from fall to fall. I mean, you know, I'm assuming you know the the Cotto fight is is really fall. So from that fall to next fall, that would be a year. And if you count on the Paul Smith fight, which was at light heavyweight, that is a year at least and some. So that kind of that timeline fits in there to what they said. Because uh, he said before he fights any top light heavyweights, mainly Kovalev, um, he is going to be a full-fledged full light heavyweight. He will have um, had, you know... Uh, a few fights there to acclimate to the weight. One he already had uh, at 72. And it looks like he might be fighting uh, Unieski Gonzalez uh, on the Kodo undercard. If that happens, that's the guy that the front runner apparently is Gonzalez. Uh, that will be a full fledged light heavyweight at 175. Um, then he would probably have another one in the summertime, you know, somewhere in the summer, maybe mid-summer, uh, against another, you know, kind of softer touch, but decent um, light heavyweight. To just to kind of acclimate his body to it, get used to the pushing and the punches and, you know, the, the weight of them, you know, resting on you and the, the weight that Ward's going to have to be wrestling around himself with his, you know, inside mauling and all that. Um, he's going to have to get used to pushing around bigger guys and grappling with bigger guys on the inside. So, you know, Virgil wants him to take at least a year before he fights a top. 175 pounder, so he can be acclimated to the weight. Just a smart move. Uh, definitely a smart move. Then, top guy. Okay. Um, the, the, the funny thing about that, though, is uh, Triple G was willing, you know, to jump up and fight Frodge, who basically was the number one guy when Ward was gone. <clears throat> and fight him in a pay-per-view fight uh, right off the bat. Even though he's a small 60, a small 60, or at least average 60, but he's on the small side. Uh, but then you have Frotch, and he was going to go for the number two guy, really, in his first fight, or only fight. And uh, no real offer was ever made from Ward to fight Triple G. First off, we all know that. Um, but Triple G detractors say, you know, Triple G is pussy because he wouldn't jump up and fight Ward. And it's not that he wouldn't because he was never even offered except for the time when he already had another fight uh, signed. And they tried to, to, to negotiate a fight with Ward and he wouldn't negotiate. So, um, you know, it's ridiculous. But, you know, they were, they're, they call Triple G a pussy because he won't jump up and fight Ward at 168 um, in his first fight at super middleweight. Okay, whatever. Um, but them same people, then, should be calling Ward a pussy for not jumping up and fighting Kovalev in his first fight at 175. And you can't say, well, it's because HBO wants a three-fight deal to build the fight. Because, yeah, they do want that. 
But at the same time, Virgil Hunter is on record several times saying Ward will not move up and fight a top 75 pounder for at least a year after he becomes a light heavyweight. So, what's the problem? I mean, you know, you're, you're completely showing how biased you are if, if, you know, you're one of those people. Um, you just heard me say what Ward is doing is smart. Um, that's what fighters are supposed to do. You're supposed to acclimate your body. Uh, at least one fight. I don't know about a whole fucking year, but um, at least, you know, a fighter, two tops, really. But And it depends on how big you are, I guess, how much weight you're putting on. But you want to acclimate to the weight. That's smart. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. Uh, <clears throat> I just hope Ward fights a decent guys until Kovalev. Uh, and I also hope Kovalev fights decent guys until Ward, if this three-fight deal happens. <clears throat> because one thing that scares me is what if uh, each guy, Ward and Kovalev, just fight, you know, fucking mismatches until they can fight each other. You know, basically just trying to get guys that they can look great against um, until their clash. That'll be bullshit. You know, uh, I wouldn't like that at all. I'd be pissed, actually. Um, I'd wish the damn fight was never scheduled and it just happened organically. Because, you know, Ward's first fight up there, he's looking to take on, you know, a guy outside of the top 30 in the light heavyweight. You know, you, you Gonzalez's box rec has him at 35, I think. Um... I mean, he's never fucking... The only person he ever fought was Pascal. And, you know, I don't. I never watched that fight again. But watching it that night, I think I thought Gonzalez won. I mean, I'm pretty sure he did win. I'm not sure. But, you know, he didn't look good. Um, he was gassing. He was wild. Pascal was wild. And I th Pascal really looked like shit um, in that fight. So it's almost like, okay, Gonzalez, you know, really did give it his all. That was an amazing performance by him of heart will and, you know, courage and desire and all that. But then when you're like, well, he beat Pascal, well, it's like, well, what Pascal did he beat? Um, really? Uh, I'm not sure how much Pascal has left. A good fight for Ward, actually, on his first fight back would be Pascal. Uh, that'd be a good fight. We, you know, it would show us what Pascal has left. Um, and, you know, it, it would at least give uh, Ward a name. A named fighter. You know, so I'd rather see him fight Pascal than Gonzalez. I think Gonzalez needs some seasoning, man. I mean, if you go look at his resume, it, it's terrible. And he was in the ring with just... a a really bad looking Pascal. That's the one thing I really remember from that fight was Pascal looks like shit. That's what I kept thinking. Um, but, you know, fair is fair. I mean, Gonzalez beat him. So, I, I just think it'd be a good acclimate. It'd be a good fight for Ward to acclimate to light heavy with because I think he schools the shit out of Gonzalez. But Gonzalez is a big, strong guy, so he wants to get in there and wrestle with him and shit. It, he'll actually uh, really be able to see what a full-fledged light heavyweight is like um, on the inside. With that, it, it would be good for that, you know, for sure. But his next fight, his next fight, uh, about summertime. I'm curious who it would be against, or what kind of guy. I mean, I know main events. <clears throat> has a few light heavyweights. Uh, you know, they got... Though I think they have um, Barrera, maybe? I think Barrera's with them. Uh, I'm not sure if, if they have Gonzalez or who Gonzalez is with, but they may have Gonzalez. They got Chalemba. Uh, I mean, they got a few light heavyweights, you know, because they're trying to gather up as many as they can, too, for... Uh, Kovalev um, from to have opponents, but let's take a look at the uh, <clears throat> well. Um, 
HBO, I remember finish this. HBO is in the process of trying to finalize a three fight deal with Ward, which is contingent on main events in Jay Z's Rock Nation Sports. Ward's promoter making a deal for the fall showdown between the two fighters. So, in other words, they won't make a three fight deal with Ward unless Rock Nation can guarantee that it leads to a fall showdown with Sergey Kovalev. Um, so, if the deal doesn't happen, you, you can kind of say. Uh, or don't want to fight Kovalev in the fall of 2016. Uh, Duva says, I can tell you we are having great conversations. Uh, that's the fight I've been saying all along is inevitable. Our talks are continuing and they are amicable. If the fight is uh, if the fight is made and therefore Ward's deal with HBO is finalized, he would move up to light heavyweight and appear in the co-feature of the HBO pay-per-view uh, Cotto Canelo card. The second fight of Ward's deal would probably take place between February and April. Okay, followed by the big one with Kovalev next fall, according to a source uh, with knowledge of the talks. HBO declined to comment on the talks. I'm sure it was like. Kathy Duva. <clears throat> um, uh, Ward uh, ended a 19-month layoff on June 20th when he knocked out Paul Smith in the ninth round of a non-title fight in his first bout since signing with Rock Nation in January. The lengthy layoff was caused ma mainly by a contract dispute with Ward's late promoter, Dan Guzan. 2004 Olympic gold medalist. Ward established himself as one of boxing's best with a dominant run through 2009 to 2011. Um, unified two belts, uh, whitewashed Carl Frotch. Then he crushed uh, then light heavyweight champion Chad Dawson in a 168-pound fight where Chad Dawson um, dropped from 175 down to 68 for the fight. Uh, but Ward has only fought twice since, not at all in 2014, once in 2015, because of the contract issues. So, you know, that's that's what the whole contract uh, hinges on. They're not, they, you know, they'll put Ward fights on occasionally, you know, maybe a fight-by-fight -fight basis if he's fighting somebody good, um, or... If they, you know, guarantee that Ward will fight Kovalev in the fall of 2016, they'll give him a three-fight deal. But remember, they'll have to approve the opponents, uh, so he won't be able to fight like a Paul Smith on HBO, you know. Unless it's like maybe a mandatory or something that he has to do, but he'll be a light heavyweight and he won't have a title no more. So, um, but you know, let's look at the light heavyweights. I mean, who's out there for him to fight? Um, it seems like Gonzalez is damn near uh, in Chalemba, but Chalemba, I mean, he's busy. Uh, Kovalev, Stevenson, Fonfara, uh, Alvarez, Brimer, Beater B, Chalemba, Pascal, uh, Hopkins, uh, Uthzian, uh, Chavez Jr. Oh, that fight better not happen. Uh, Marcus Brown, Rodriguez, Edwin Rodriguez, the very one that, you know, Ward already beat, so take him out. Uh, Nathan Cleverly. Uh, is Cleverly with Heyman? If Cleverly's with... Oh, yeah, he's fighting for far away. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thought so. Yeah, so, I mean, he can't fight for far I mean, there's so many names here. He can't really even fight with either. Um, Bika, Najib Mohammadi, no. Uh, Tommy Carpency. Mm. Uh, there's this dude, um, Alexander... Gavodzdik, he's seven and zero, but he's ranked uh, number twenty, and uh, he just he, in his very last fight, he just beat um, Francisco Sierra, who's twenty-seven, eight and one. I mean, this guy's been fast tracked, man. He already beat uh, Otis Griffin, Corey Cummings, uh, Michael Gabanga, and he got a TBA scheduled for November twentieth um, in Vegas. I don't think he'd be ready for Ward or anything like that, but someone to keep an eye on. Um, you know, he's and he has a picture with a gold medal. I guess he won a gold medal in the Olympics, from what I saw. I don't know where that gold medal was from, but it looked like the Olympics. 
um, Tom Williams, Rhino Liebenberg, uh, Sam Clarkson, uh, Mike Huckstev, um, Aji Safi, Aji Seth, uh, Vasily Lepikin, uh, Sullivan Barrera, um, that would have been, uh, a decent fight. Um, Preto, Sean Monahan, Krasniki, uh, Dominic Bozell, uh, Sec Campillo, uh, Campillo, Campillo, Campillo. I wonder is Campillo might be likely if he's not with Heyman. Uh, I know Beater Beef whooped him, but I think that was before Beater Beef was with Heyman. Maxim Vlazov, uh, I mean, there's just not many, man. Uh, Unieski Gonzalez is down here at 34. Um, 16 and 1, 12 KOs. We know that should be 17 and 0. Um, but, like, he, he took a big jump, too, man. Like, uh, he fought Jean Pascal, and Pascal was 28 3 and 1. And before that, he was fighting guys. Right before that, his opponent was 10 and 16, and 6 and 10 was the opponent before that. 14 and 9 was the opponent before that. I mean, you know, he was fighting trash opponents, uh, but <laughs> you know, he was—he's a good fighter. I mean, he's a Cuban, uh, Cuban schooled. He's not, you know, that type of Cuban fighter, but. He is dedicated. Um, I think he needs to spend a little more time getting in conditioning, though. He didn't seem very well conditioned in, in the biggest fight of his career. Uh, I didn't understand that. It's not like Pascal's the biggest, busiest fighter or something like that. I don't know why he looked so gassed. Uh, he kept fighting through it, though. I'll give him that. The guy has a ton of heart. Um... Hey, man, he, he won that fight and got screwed. If Ward wants to fight him, at least that's cool for Gonzalez. You know, Gonzalez is getting a nice shot. Um, hopefully they pay him good, too. Uh, I'd be kind of pissed if they actually gave him, you know, like how they did uh, uh, Matisse and Postal and Broner and Khabib. I mean, that was them fucking paydays were ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. You know, that's why when I hear... Oh, Heyman cares about the fighters. Oh, really? Is that why he gives, like, you know... <laughs> give me a break. It's sickening. Um, he only cares about a couple fighters. Fighters that might make him money. That's it. Um, and yes, Khabib took it, but uh, he's known for overpaying his, you know, main event fighters, right? Uh, if I was Khabib, I would have said, this shit ain't happening. Unless it's on um, PBC, because he says PBC, uh, main event fighters, you know, uh, get all this money. But, yeah, Khabib is going home with probably 10,000 American. I mean, that's bad, man. That's fucked up. I think he got 50 grand, right? I think he got 50K. Um, that's terrible. But maybe Gonzalez, you know, I mean, he, he deserves another big fight. He had a big fight and got the shaft. You know, so I'd like to see him get a big fight. If it's going to be Ward who gives it to him, maybe Ward and uh, Rock Nation will be nice enough to give him a, a nice payday. You know, the guy deserves one. Um, well, I mean, he don't really deserve one, but, you know, if he's going to be in that kind of a fight where he's kind of coming in just to give Ward a win, um, it, it, he's going to try, but I'm just saying he ain't going to win. So at least fucking give the guy a nice payday. Um, I'm sure he came from one of the Cuban schools in the neighborhoods down there where the kid's been, you know, working his ass off since he was 10, 8, you know. Uh, so, you know, let, let, let the guy live a little bit. Um, I, I, I'll be cool if he fights Gonzalez. I mean, I know Gonzalez is, you know, totally not, um... A live underdog. I don't think he is at all. I think Ward just totally outboxes him. Uh, clearly. Clearly. Like, I don't even think Gonzalez can win a round. Um, Gonzalez might have a lucky punch chance, and that's about it. Uh, but 
I only like to fight because I think Gonzalez deserves another chance. I just don't think this is the chance that <laughs> is going to help him, uh, you know, win a big fight. Um, I like that he's getting the opportunity, though. Who knows? He might be able to make the most of it. I just I doubt it. Um, I need to see Ward against some top guys, too. Because at the moment, at 175, I'm totally favoring Kovalev in that matchup, man. Um, the, 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 just the size and strength and the power. Um, Ward's lack of power. I mean... I don't know. That's a tough, tough fight for Andre, man. Um, you know, maybe you could change my mind as he's, you know, acclimating to that weight uh, and fights. You know, if he fights some decent guys, um, I can see how he performs at light heavyweight and you know reassess it. But I know 168 pounds. I know Paul Smith Ward. No way. No way in hell does Paul Smith Ward beat fucking Kovalev. I mean, there's just no way. Um, and, like, yeah, Ward's going to get back into his groove, but Ward's not going to get better than he was in, say, 2011. He's, I don't even know if he'll get back to that exact point. He'll be smarter, though. Um, that's for sure. Uh, but Kovalev is continuously getting better better, uh, just uh, being a, becoming a better professional boxer. Um, John David Jackson is doing a tremendous job developing him, uh, while at the same time fighting anybody. It's, you know, it's a really, really amazing job John David Jackson is doing over there. Uh, you know, he's, he's really working some magical Kovalev. Um, Curious to see if this deal goes through. Real curious to see if this deal goes through. And we should know, like, ASAP, if they want his first fight to be a co-feature on a pay-per-view. They have to make this deal, like, instantly. Um, and Ward must be in training or something. Uh, you know, he has to be. So, you know, we're going to find out. Uh, I would think he's in fucking camp for sure. Getting ready for, like, a TBA. Um... I don't know, man. Let me know if you think uh, if this 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 plan happens. Uh, do you think Ward is gonna just decide to stick it out at 168, or do you think he's gonna take the the HBO deal and fight Kovalev in the fall? Um, I sure hope that's what he does, because that's gonna be an amazing fight. Uh, like I don't heavily favor Kovalev, but I, I surely I solidly favor him. Um, but you know, we'll have to see, man. It's, it's going to be a, that'll be an amazing showdown. Neither guy has ever fought anyone as good as the other, ever. Um, so that's going to be tremendous to see. Uh, yeah. Let me know who you guys favor in that matchup if it happens, and uh, basically, do you think Ward is going to go for it? Um, because just because they're in talks, don't mean he's going to go for it. They're in talks, and I'm sure. They're going to make an offer, show the offer to Ward. Ward's going to go sit down with his family and Virgil, which he says he will always do. Um, and then they'll discuss it. You know, they could be discussing it like tomorrow or right now even. Um, you know, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And we should know very soon. So that's a good thing. But let me know what you guys think on those and those topics and anything else I've talked about. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.